Hello everyone. Today I want to talk a bit about tanks in Hearts of Iron 4. But uh, I'm not really going to go for the what is the one meta design that if you just build this one thing it's going to make you win the game. Instead, uh, how do you fit tanks into your general strategy? How do you build them? Uh, where do they make sense and where do they not make sense? Let's go over the necessary research first because that can be quite confusing at times. Now, uh, here we've got the armor tab and we have actually five types of tanks. We've got amphibious tanks, we've got the light tanks, we've got the medium tanks, we've got the heavy tanks, and we've got the super heavy tanks. But these are only the chassis. There's a lot more to it. We have uh, the guns that are necessary for tanks, and uh, we're not just talking about tank as in turreted armored vehicle or rotating turreted armored vehicle, but also uh, things like self-propelled artillery or self-propelled anti-air. So these, uh, these three trees or four trees here are going to give you a variety of, of tank cannons. Sometimes there's duplication between them. But uh, so for example, the 37 millimeter uh, AA gun here gives you uh, a basic heavy cannon. Uh, it gives you the auto cannons for the tanks and all kinds of other things that you can find in these branches here down to rockets where you can actually start fi uh, fitting uh, fitting uh, rocket launchers onto your tanks as well. The next research tree that you need to be aware of when it comes to tanks is engineering, because the radio tech uh, enables not just radar stations, but also the radio modules for tanks, which are quite useful because if tank uh, if tank commanders can talk to each other and coordinate, that makes the whole division a lot more powerful. And uh, here, hidden in the improved computing machine, which you're probably going to pick up anyway is the stabilizer which is yet another special module there might be one or two that i've missed but the last one that i'm aware of right now is uh the engineer 2 because that gives the uh dozer blades and flamethrowers for uh, light ta for tank support companies and there are quite some hidden features when it comes to tanks all around but let's go and take a look at the tank designer and, and see what that looks like. So the first thing you do is you pick yourself, uh, you pick yourself a chassis. So let's say we're taking a uh, we're taking a basic light tank chassis, and we're going to create a variant. So you now you have a, a variety of choices here, of things you can do. The first thing you're going to need a gun, and you can choose uh, you can choose most. Uh, you've got the gun categories matching the whole size. So you've got the small armaments for the light tanks, medium for the mediums, and heavy for the, uh, large for the heavies. So here you can again choose between a variety of things. And yes, it can look very overwhelming at first, but it's actually not that complicated. You see. You see these little symbols here uh, these actually show you which role you can have the tank in so for example if we pick uh, if we pick just a regular cannon then this is a light tank it can't be a tank destroyer it can't be an artillery anti-air amphibious or flame support but if we were to pick a different uh, a different armament so let's say we're picking an, an anti-air gun this can be a light, uh, uh, an anti-air tank. It can't be a light tank anymore, but it can be a light self-propelled anti-air gun at this point. And this will then start changing changing all the values that you see over here, so suddenly this tank now can shoot upwards. Similar things. Then you've got a turret that you need to choose from. You can choose between a fixed superstructure, which is a non-rotating turret, uh, one-man, two-man or three-man turrets, which all have their advantages and disadvantages. You get to choose secondary turrets, radios, and a whole list of special modules that you can pick uh, and choose what you want to put on, on your tank. And then you've got the suspension, where again you've got a bunch of choices between tracked and non-tracked, so wheels basically. Uh, you've, got, you've got different types of armor between riveted, welded, and cast. And you've got different types of engines, which have uh, different advantages and disadvantages. And you can still effectively boost the engine and the armor, just make it more powerful and slap more plates on, which gives you things, but also takes things away. Right, so now that we have, now that we have got a bit of an overview of how we get into tanks, uh, what is the purpose of tanks? Well, historically, it all started when everybody dug in in the First World War and it, found, it, it was found that um, 
frontal assaults with humans against entrenched positions was a bit of an issue because everybody got shot. <laughs> Which wasn't particularly great for the morale of the men, to quote Blackadder. So tanks as a what if we put a, cu a couple of people into a in, into a metal box that is self-propelled, uh, can shoot out, but is impervious to small arms fire, and can cross a trench and as such just become a breakthrough unit. That's how it all started. And then uh, at, the, at the onset of the First World War in the and in the interwar period. Most people were building tankettes, light tanks, and similar things. Uh, there were a couple of designs around for other things as well. But it was a constant evolution throughout the time between, uh, between firepower and armor. And eventually everything settled uh, around the mine battle tank at the end when people said, you know what, we've got enough engine power and we've got enough armor technology to make this a viable thing now, and this just supersedes everything else and we don't need to distinguish anymore and that's where we are today still a tank division even today doesn't work very well if it if it runs unsupported if you look at uh, ongoing conflicts you can see that quite clearly that a tank by itself is not something that actually works and this goes all the way back to the first world war where uh, you know it was after the initial shock has worn had worn off it turned out that if you hit a tank with a sufficiently large shell, or if you were to, uh, to let's say, have an infantryman get close to the tank and stick something explosive into its tracks, that very, very quickly you did not have a tank anymore. So tanks can't operate on themselves. That said, tanks are very good breakthrough and uh, assault units because of their armor and their firepower that they bring to bear and because they are fast and self-propelled. And uh, under the right circumstances. And this is pretty much reflected in the game here as well. But before we get any further into the details, there are a couple of combat stats that you need to understand uh, just to make sense of everything and to, to understand why and what, what you can use tanks for. So uh, let's go through a couple of basics. I, I'm, I am leaving chapters in the description, so feel free to skip over these if you're already familiar with them. But uh, what are important stats for the consideration today? Well, uh, we've got two attack values. We've got soft attack and hard attack. Soft attack is, uh, a, is the amount of, well, I'm going to simplify here, but is what you can do to, to an unarmored target. So we're talking artillery, which is a tank gun without the chassis around it. We're talking uh, infantry, just soldiers, trucks, these kind of things. So anything that does not have an armor plating. Hard attack is what you do against things that do have an armor plating and uh, how much you can do to those. If you're looking at combat, you have two defensive stats and this is where this can get really confusing. So uh, the defense value is what gets matched up against the attack value if you're on the defending side. So if you are being attacked, uh, the, the defense is matched up against soft attack or hard attack depending on the hardness of your division. What the heck's hardness? Well, you see this slider down here. This is the hardness. This is the amount of armor that your division has, not your tank itself, but that your division has as, an, as a sort of average. And the more hardness you have, the more you get affected by or matched up against the hard attack. Whereas if you don't have any hardness, you get uh, matched up against the soft attack. So that's where you kind of where your defense applies. Lastly, we have breakthrough. Breakthrough is a defense stat. Why, why, does, why do we have two defense stats? Well, one is for defending, that's the defense, and breakthrough is the defense stat while you're attacking. Now, if you think of this as an actual combat situation, right? Uh, somebody moves out into an enemy-held territory, so they are attacking an enemy, di uh, enemy divisions. They, these enemy divisions are going to shoot back. And the breakthrough is effectively the defense you have on the move while you're in the attack. For how long can you sustain the attack? Because the what you're trying to achieve with every attack is to gain ground, is to render an enemy uh, combat ineffective, is to uh, position yourself under fire, these sort of things. So breakthrough is the value of how long can you keep attacking before you need to break, up, break off and fall back or need to stop and, um, and regroup, these sort of things. And this is the very this, this is a very important stat that as we'll see for for armored divisions. Uh, we also have an armor stat. Uh, armor 
is the defensive value that gets matched against the offensive value of piercing. Piercing is effe effectively how much steel you can punch through with your guns, whatever you have there. And armor is the obvious opposite. How much steel do you have between yourself and the things that go kaboom to prevent your soldiers from being killed or wounded? So the, these, these values are quite important to understand uh, into, as to why a tank division is or why tanks are useful. So as for a baseline, let's look at a regular infantry division and uh, we'll see that this infantry division has, has a, like, a bit soft attack, but only about, um, well, about ten, uh, 10 times the value of the hard attack. So the hard attack is relatively low and the hard attack in this division is from things like hand carried grenades, from the support artillery company and all these kind of things. It's got a decent defense stat which is significantly higher than its soft attack and it has a, a breakthrough value but it obviously has no armor and this is a zero percent hardness division so this does not take any damage from heart attacks so uh, sh shooting shooting at soldiers with armor piercing shells generally does not an awful lot unless you hit them straight in the face shooting with high explosive fragmentation ammunition is a very, is a completely different story altogether so if we are if we're comparing that uh, so we've got the 97 and the 36 here soft attack and uh, we've got a little bit of piercing. But if we compare that, let's say, to a tank division here, which has, uh, as it stands, it's a different division, but um, which has a significantly higher breakthrough value. And the piercing isn't great on this one, but that's due to the, that's due to the kind of tank that, we, that we're using. So generally, a tank division is going to have <coughs> a relatively good a relatively high heart attack value, this one does not, but that's again because of the division setup, has a pretty good breakthrough and has armor, and armor, if it's higher than the piercing of the defending uh, division, is pretty good at uh, preventing damage being done to the tank division. So it's the uh, tank rolls at you and all you have is a rifle and your rifle does nothing against the tank, so you need to fall back because you literally can't easily defeat the tank. That sort of scenario. So. Now that we've got that sort of cleared up, let's get into the tank designer. So here we've got the basic light tank chassis, and uh, that's something we can start working with. It's got a hardness of 80%, and uh, until you start putting something on it, it doesn't have an awful lot of values by itself. But for example, if you look at the speed, this one does five kilometers. If we look at the medium tank chassis, it does that as well, but it has a hardness of 85%, and the heavy tank chassis is slower, but has more armor and more hardness. So the, and we've got the super heavy eventually, uh, which has 100% hardness, but it's really slow and got high armor. So we, we have multiple scales here. The, the bigger the tank, the slower it is, but the harder it is, and the more armor it's gonna bring with it. And, and that makes sense. But at the beginning of the game, you're mostly going to be dealing with light tanks because everybody else is pretty much gonna be dealing with light tanks as well and maybe some mediums, but uh, light tanks are there for uh, breaking through or a, a, a kind of an early game unit. Towards the, towards the mid, mid game or late game, you do want to switch to mediums or heavy tanks, mostly mediums most likely, because it's a good average between everything. Uh, but uh, the light tanks are not completely obsolete, but we'll get to that later. So now you, you have to ask yourself, how do I design this tank? Well. You can, go two, you can go two ways. First, the first direction you could go is to just put everything on it, right? everything that you can possibly put onto the tank. So the best things, put a three-man turret in, we're going to put the, um, uh, the best cannon that, we're gonna, that we can put in here, we're going to put the best radio in here, uh, we're, going to put, uh, we're going to put armor skirts in here, uh, we're going to put uh, wet ammunition storage, and we're going to put an additional machine gun and then we stick with the gasoline engine and we can put cast armor onto this tank and we can put uh, say for example a uh, we could put interleaved road wheels on that's giving us the highest um, giving us the highest breakthrough value there and then we're going to stick everything we can possibly into the engine and everything we can possibly stick into the armor so, uh, this would net you a tank that is very unreliable. 
<laughs> so it's breaking down a lot but uh, has some decent relatively decent stats to it the soft attack and the hard attack isn't great because we're talking about a very small cannon this is this is going to be like a 37 millimeter or something of that sort uh, the piercing value is pretty good uh, the armor value for a light tank isn't terrible the breakthrough is pretty decent with 80 but it's getting expensive i mean 22.5 is not something to sneeze at this can get relatively expensive pretty quickly so the next thing you're going to have to ask yourself what do i want to do with these tanks how many am i going to need of these tanks mm. now even in world war ii not every uh not every german division was a tank division in fact it was a lot uh, depends on which period you're looking but here you're looking somewhere maybe 25 percent or so or maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less at times depends also which theater but overall there was a significantly larger amount of infantry than there was on tanks and it's going to be the same for you as well uh, so even even a small division like this and this is a 12 width division uh, gets 180 light tanks that is a lot of light tanks and if you, these things cost uh, cost 200 uh, two, uh, cost 22 IC per piece, uh, this is this is estimated of the uh, of the existing designs that we have. But even with the existing designs, that would cost 900 IC to to build that, compared to 600 to build a significant uh, an 18 with infantry division outfitted. So if we were to bring this up to a, a somewhat reasonable value, even with the very relatively cheap light tank design, this isn't even the design we've just done. But if we're bringing that to a 20 width, we're already talking uh, talking twice of what an infantry division costs. So tanks are expensive, and that's something that you just need to uh, that's something that you just need to uh, to take into account. That tanks cost a lot, which brings us back again to the question: So what tank should we build then? Uh, should we build a cheap tank? Maybe it depends very much on what you do. There's another thing that we need to until we can answer these questions that we need to look at and you see that here in the division designer look at the uh, look at the the adjustments here in a for uh, this tank division which has a couple of light tanks in it and these are light tanks this is the they have the, the least problems with uh, with terrain uh, forests are terrible for you um, so mountains are not good either uh, urban uh, areas is not great either you actually have problems defending yourself in urban environments, which makes sense because people tend to, you know, not stand right in front where you can shoot them, but uh, use the terrain and the houses and the houses tend to be higher than tanks. So they can drop things from the top on tanks, which tanks traditionally tend to react to very poorly. Uh, jungles, for obvious reasons, are very, very bad for tanks. They don't work well. Uh, marshland, not great either. Uh, rivers, well, rivers don't work well for anybody, but uh, additionally, additionally to the river crossing debuff, you still get uh, movement and attack debuffs if you're trying to get a tank across a river. And um, and for amphibious landings, uh, tanks get an additional 30 light tank divisions get an additional 30% debuff. So generally, tanks don't react very well to uh, to being to being anywhere uh, anywhere near the uh, to, to, to any terrain almost. So if we look through that and you can see this, you can see this nicely summarized in the interwar tank uh, tech. Uh, you see that the light tanks is what we just looked at. But if we look at the at the medium tanks, uh, it actually gets worse. So if we're looking forest goes from minus 40 minus 20 to minus 40 minus 30 to minus 40 minus 40 for the heavy tank. We haven't even looked at the super heavies yet. The uh, the mountains uh, uh, the mountains are getting worse. The medium tanks can't work well in hills either because they have pro presumably engine problems of getting the getting that lump of steel up the hill. Uh, they perform about as bad in urban environments and they perform even worse in jungles than light tanks. And uh, let's not just get started with, with marshland, rivers. And it gets even worse for heavy tanks, whereas the only thing that the heavy tanks are really good at is fortifications. So heavy tanks are fortress busters. But the rest of them are pretty much um, only really suitable in uh, in open plains. <laughs> so if you look at the terrain, if you look at the terrain map. Where do we have it? Uh, there it is. Terrain map mode. So if we look at the the United States here. Uh, this is plains. This territory is plains, right? 
but anything other than plains, forests, hills, mountains, uh, really don't work well. So it depends a lot where you are actually fighting. Are you fighting in Europe? Um, yeah, that works. There's plenty of pl plenty of, uh, of plains territory. It's this brownly mottled uh, ground here. Plenty of uh, plains territory in Europe, unless you want to get through uh, through the Balkans, where in the Balkans this uh, starts getting a little more difficult. If you wanted to uh, to attack uh, central Romania, or if you want to take Yugoslavia, this is all hills and mountains. Tanks are not going to be doing well in here at all. Uh, do you fight in the Soviet Union? works in many places. There are some marshlands here, there's plenty of forests in the north, but uh, at least the south is relatively open plains. Uh, are you fighting in in uh, in China? There are some plains, but also, uh, also a fair amount of mountainous and, and other terrain around that doesn't work quite as well. Uh, are you fighting in are you fighting in Africa? Central Africa is all forest and jungle. Tanks are completely useless over here. Are you fighting in South America? Uh, it's all jungle. <laughs> Tanks are not very good at those things. There's a good reason that the Japanese Empire did not have an awful lot of tanks, because most of the time uh, they were they would be, well, first of all, they had to, co to uh, concentrate on the Navy, but oftentimes they had to fight in, uh, in uh, islands close to the equator. And that's all jungle, mountains and hills. Tanks don't do very well in these sort of areas. So it very much depends where you're fighting as well and what you're planning. So if you're, that's sort of where you have to make the decision, do I actually need tanks? But let us assume that you have now decided that you, yes, you do need a handful of tank companies. And because these are very valuable, you want to manage them by hand. So you probably don't need 24 of them. But uh, you want to have two, three, four maybe tank companies to make something happen. And you're starting out with building some light tanks early on. You can actually use light tanks quite, quite, uh, quite well, even after they've become obsolete in the battle line, as things like uh, recon or uh, flame tank support companies, because these are quite good. But uh, the first question then becomes, uh, what am I going to stick on there? Now, you've got the choice between AA guns which are going to give you a bit of soft attack, a bit of hard attack, but also mostly are focused on AA. And this would make it more of a self-propelled uh, uh, self AA, and it actually removes the light tank roll. You can use these close support gun, which uh, is available early on. Uh, it allows you to turn this into an artillery, so a self-propelled gun, but um, a self-propelled artillery gun, but it also allows you to just use it as a light tank more in a sort of uh, it reduces the speed and more in a sort of infantry tank role. Uh, historically, the distinction was early on made between an infantry tank and a cavalry tank. The infantry tank was a thing that stuck with the infantry, so it had to be heavily armored, it had to have a lot of firepower, um, but it didn't have to be fast because it did. It could just, it, it had to stick with the infantry anyway. Whereas a cavalry tank was meant for mobile warfare and effectively uh, it, it was meant to replace the horseback cavalry that we had previously. Uh, you've got the high velocity cannons, which are, uh, as you can see, are much more geared towards hard attack. Um, and we've got the uh, just, just the general purpose cannon. So these things, the, the non-specialized one, are your general purpose tank cannons. They can fight armor piercing shells against, um, they can fight fire armor piercing shells against enemy tanks or hard targets like uh, like half trucks and they can also fire explosive fragmentation shells against infantry to have some soft attack. Uh, the the turrets are going to affect your breakthrough, but the the more the bigger the turret, why why is that? Why does that make sense? Well, uh, because the larger the turret, the more people you can fit in there. The more people you can fit in there, the fewer things one person has to do at the same time. So if you have a commander who's also the radio operator and the loader and uh, has to do all three things, he's not going to be as good on each as he would be if he was just coordinating the tank and the assault. And that's where your breakthrough comes in, because remember, breakthrough is uh, the, the sustain value that you have on your, on your assault. So a good a two man turret is a good it gives you a good breakthrough value it doesn't it doesn't cost the world or you could even go with a three man turret depending again how expensive you want to make your tank. Next up the engines uh, the gasoline engine is a pretty good all rounder it gives you it gives you a bonus on speed uh, the diesel engine does not but in return gives you reliability so if your reliability is a concern 
you can you can always uh, you can always trade these these two. They cost about the same. Uh, the petrol electric engines are a bit weird. They they have a significant Im imp uh, increase in production cost and they they drop your reliability a lot. So early on, you're not going to be wanting to do anything with those. But um, gasoline engine is a decent one. Uh, the armor, everybody started out riveting their tank armor. The problem is if you're riveting your armor, uh, imagine you have armor plates held together with rivets going through the armor plates. Now imagine um, shooting a heavy bit of metal at high speed that explodes on the outside of that armor. Can you imagine what happens to the rivets? Yes, <laughs> they become. Effectively, you have turned your sh um, you have turned your tank into a self-contained fragmentation grenade. So, uh, rivets fell out of favor. Uh, welding was most of the time uh, something that was was done a lot, and uh, you can go for cast armor, but uh, stuff gets expensive. Now you do get defense and breakthrough values, but you also get an armor bonus. So again, depending on your industry, depending on your needs, that is a twenty percent overall production cost buff. So bulk. Well, the armor is a good choice, or if you just want a cheap tank, uh, riveted armor can also be enough. Let's see what the difference is actually. It's 19.5 with the welded, and it's 15 with the riveted. And you can still boost these armor values here. So if, let's say, we're going for, uh, let's say, six armor, and we're talking 27 with the welded and 22 with the riveted. So it spreads a little bit out. But again, this is not the value you're going to get because this is this is going to be the part in your in your tank division that it contributes. You want to have it as high as you can, but obviously also not run not go into a cost overrun. Then you want to have some form of radio because radios are giving you breakthrough. So even a basic radio is for a not high cost going to give you uh, breakthrough and defense. And these are percentage values, so they stack, which is a really good one. And that. Honestly, that's an 8 IC light tank, uh, but it's too slow. Right now it'd be an infantry tank. We only have, we have, we're down the reliability to 91% already. So um, if we want to make this a little faster and, uh, and trucks can go 12 kilometers an hour. So if we want to at least get, let's say maybe up to 10, then um, we could do that by boosting the engine. We could sacrifice a little bit of armor to, to get more speed if we wanted to, but uh, that's sort of where your balance is. And if you feel that your reliability is too low, you can start um, you can start countering that with uh, special modules. So you could use like a wet ammunition storage, which is going to uh, going to give you fifteen percent reliability back, but uh, again at the cost of at the cost of your IC. So uh, that that then gets more expensive again. And uh, you obviously need to research that as well. So uh, there's a fair amount of stuff that you can do, but don't go overboard. Don't necessarily, you don't need to, to do what the Germans did and completely over-engineer your, your vehicles. But um, find a good compromise between what you need, uh, between what you, uh, well, for what situation do you need it? What are you trying to do with your tanks? And what opposition are you facing? Because uh, here, here's the thing. Most of the time, so let's save that one. Most of the time, you'll be facing, and go back to our tank division, uh, you will be facing um, infantry divisions because the majority of the enemy, uh, of, of, the, of the AI divisions are, I'm talking about single player here, the majority of the AI divisions are going to be infantry divisions. So all that heart attack that you're building here doesn't do anything against infantry divisions because they have 0% hardness. They only get affected by the soft attack. So you actually want a bit more there. Now you could argue that you could just stick some artillery in there. So if we take a regular artillery, then uh, that would boost our soft attack. And it would also give us additional hard attack because artillery shells also work against tanks to a degree. The problem now obviously is that suddenly our division only has a four kilometer an hour speed, which defeats the whole purpose of a fast mobile cavalry chunk breakthrough division. So that's not something we can do. We can replace this with a motorized artillery. That solves the speed problem. What, does ha what that, however, doesn't really do is, uh, is improving anything that we have in terms of armor. It gives us a little bit of breakthrough as well. So that's a cheap alternative that we can put. But what if we really want, we can always put a, uh, a support company on as well, because a support company is not going to reduce the speed. So that's another cheap way of doing it. But um, 
what if we wanted uh, if we wanted more armor if we wanted to maximize the amount of armor that we can get out of this well we can armor our artillery so if we go back to the uh, if we could go back to the tank designer we can take ourselves uh, our light tank that we have where was it there it is and we could create a variant out of that so uh, we can replace the we can replace the uh, the small cannon, so the general purpose tank gun, with uh, with a. In this case, let's we can take that the the close support gun. But if we were taking a larger, if we were using a larger chassis, let's say um, we can even do that with the small tank. So let's say we replace the the turret with a fixed superstructure. So suddenly our turret no longer ha our tank no longer has a turret a rotating turret, but a fixed superstructure. Uh, we suddenly can put medium armament on it. So we could put a medium howitzer onto this tank. And that would mean that uh, we suddenly have a vehicle that has the same amount of armor. It has significantly less piercing because we've replaced the standard cannon that can fire armor piercing shells with, uh, with a howitzer, which is, the, which is a low velocity indirect fire gun. Our heart attack's gone right down, but our soft attack has more than doubled. So uh, we could use that thing. And uh, uh, it can't be a light tank anymore because we've removed the turret and everything else. But it could now become uh, a, an artillery. So suddenly we, we have removed our, we have slightly reduced our hardness. We have, we've definitely reduced our piercing and our heart attack, but we've significantly boosted the soft attack value and we've maintained our speed. So if we save that as well and go back to our tank division, we can now and uh, actually start throwing, uh, where is it, uh, self-propelled artillery in here. And we get, uh, we actually increase the overall armor of the division by throwing more artillery in there. And uh, instead of reducing the, the overall armor of the division by using the, uh, the towed artillery, which has no armor. So you can produce self-propelled variants and you can do the same with AA. You can produce the self-propelled variants of this to further, uh, further boost your, your soft attack and, and your breakthrough while maintaining your armor. Now let's look at a relatively standard uh, infantry division, something that you would see sort of on the defense uh, we've got one line artillery, we've got one support artillery, and we've got support anti-air. And uh, this thing's got uh, this thing's got a, an okay amount of soft attack, relatively little heart attack, a decent amount of defense, little breakthrough, obviously no armor, and about 40 piercing. How can we uh, how can we design something that can break through that without too much trouble? Well, let's head over to the to the tank designer and uh, see if we can build ourselves a medium tank. So we'll start out with, uh, let's go with our two-man turret, good middle ground, and we're going to go with a welded armor setup. Uh, we can leave uh, we can leave the Christie suspension or uh, which gives us gives us 20 percent speed, which is a decent uh, is a, a decent trade-off there. So we'll, we'll leave that in and uh, then the question becomes, what kind of gun do we put in here? We could prove we could put the uh, the improved medium cannon in here, which is going to give us uh, a sort of all round value, right? So this gets uh, the piercing up to ninety, soft attack thirty five, and hard attack up to twenty. Alternatively, uh, we could put the medium howitzer in here, which is not going to be great on terms of piercing but is going to have a significantly better soft attack, but not an awful lot on heart attack. Uh, the, the howitzer does not necessarily mean that you have to be, uh, that you have to be uh, an artillery roll. So I can put this in here, and as long as I leave the turret in, this, this is effectively, uh, this can be sort of an infantry tank with a howitzer, and it still runs as a medium tank roll. It just does not have an awful lot of heart attack. So if you're purely facing infantry, that's something you could do. Or if you occasionally have to deal with tanks, you could go with a tank for the all-round version. And then again, we'll throw a decent radio in there. 
and uh, we'll see how fast we can make these, how well we can armor these things. Remember, we have a 40, 40 piercing on the other side. Now, you could say, oh, we've, we've got almost 70 armor. Yes, but the tank is not going to be the only thing in the division, because tanks by themselves don't work very well. So we definitely want the armor up a little bit, and we'll see how far we can push the engine before it becomes a problem. Uh, we could go out about 8 kilometers, and uh, we might... Uh, if we wanted to, just throw the weather ammunition storage in there. There, there we go. 15 IC, not too expensive. And uh, we have a decent 8 kilometers uh, with 96 armor. And um, and a, a decent all-round. Tanks, uh, this is an all-round. It can fight enemy tanks, but it can also uh, fight infantry. So that would be our Sherman. And then uh, we could create a variant of it that is using the, uh, the fixed superstructure and uh, could use in in that he could use a um, uh, a heavy howitzer which would get the soft attack up to 60 whereas if we were using the uh, medium howitzer it's 50 so heavy howitzer would be good so we do that uh, that would then become an artillery piece and obviously we do need to match our speed but uh, that would be the self-propelled artillery variant that we'd be bringing along and we can then we can then do the same thing for for AA if we need it. But if we then go and design ourselves an, uh, a tank division, so we'll just do a brand new division here and put uh, put a medium tank, a good set of medium tanks in here. There we go. Let's do let's do another row. just like that. And then we we can put some mobile. Uh, we'll just put some motorized infantry in here for now. You can use uh, you can use the um, you you can use different uh, the the mechanized infantry which has which brings hardness in. But uh, we'll start out with these for now, and we could throw in a um, medium self, uh, two pieces of medium self propelled artillery plus a support RT, and suddenly we're talking about something that has uh, 74 armor, which means that this infantry division has no way of actually piercing this. It's got 450 breakthrough, which means that because it has a hardness of 57%, half of the attack comes, uh, half, uh, more than half of the damage comes from hard attack, which the infantry division does not have an awful lot of. And it's got a f soft attack of almost 500, which means that division can cut through an infantry division, a defending infantry division or two, without too much problems, and due to the high armor value, they're also they're only going to do 50% uh, of the of the damage. It is a gradual slope by now since one of the last year, uh, one of the last updates. But uh, if they can't pierce it, then they will have a, a devil of a time actually stopping this. And that's what these kind of divisions are for. But uh, it needs 400 tanks, 100 self-propelled artillery, and comes up with a pretty hefty price tag so you probably don't want you don't you probably don't want a full army of those but you want probably a handful three four maybe depending on what you're fighting and where you're fighting this is going to be uh, this is going to be completely useless in forests it's going to be okay in hills uh, it's not going to be great in mountains it's definitely not going to be good in in urban environments the jungles out of the question uh, marshlands aren't great either, uh, neither are rivers, and uh, you never try to actually land with these things. That's where the specialized, like if you need if you need that, that's where you would build more specialized variants for naval landings or for these kind of or for river crossings. So you can do these kind of things, and uh, like I said, there there's a lot more still that you can do in terms of you can put recon companies in, which is still if you use armored recon, which um, is going to give you movement bonuses on all kinds of all kinds of places. Uh, you can put the if you build a flame tank, you can put the flame tank in, which which counters some, like for example, the urban problems that you're having with these. So there's still more that you can do, but I think in general you get the idea of um, of what you're trying to build. So as always, um, it's a balance. There's not the single thing that you need to build and it makes you win the game. It depends on where you're fighting, it depends on what you're fighting, and it depends on uh, how much your industry can support. And oftentimes it's you, you can get away, and a lot of times you can get away without tanks. Lastly, uh, the last thing I want to mention is that these tank divisions are using a lot of supply. 
So if you look at, uh, and we'll have to skip over back here, but if you look at your supply networks, uh, the, the tanks are gonna be using a lot of supply. They are expensive to maintain. So a huge number of tanks in one place is going to strain your supply, which makes pushing and offensive operations a lot harder, which is what your tanks are for. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. That's something you can balance out with improving your supply in general or using logistics companies to reduce, uh, to reduce, uh, to reduce the amount of supply. The other thing that you need for tanks is fuel. Not everybody has fuel. So uh, be sure that you actually have enough fuel to run all these tanks because without fuel, tanks are pretty useless. So uh, that in general, is in a very general terms is uh, what you can do and how you can design yourself some tank divisions and now you can go and explore think about your strategies think about how, how tanks are fitting within your strategy what kind of tanks you need and explore the more fringe areas as well because there's quite some fascinating stuff around uh, the amphibious tanks or maybe the flame tank uh, the flame tank company that you get out of out of en engineer 2 that can really help, even a not armored division can really help it out. And uh, are you designing your tanks for speed? Are you designing your tanks just for firepower? Are you, uh, do you need the speed? Do you need to exploit the breakthroughs on the quick? Do you maybe build two different kinds of tanks? There's all kinds of things that you can do to, to figure that out. And uh, I think it's, it's a very fast, it's a great change to just build tanks that you can go and have all this freedom with the designs and uh, match the situation that you're in. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.